Hi, this is a helpful video for calculation with the scientific notation. This is the homework problem where you need to know how to do this. So here you are doing Newton's universal law of gravitation calculation, or really calculation with a very small number. Here you can look up the formula you need to use from the book, Newton's law of universal gravitation, and you are given the gravitational constant g. The masses are given in the question. Let me write it out for clarity. And the distance is also given in the question. So in theory, it's a simple calculation, or so I thought. If you are finding that you are struggling with this calculation, you work out the number, plug it in, and you are not getting the right answer, uh, I want you to know that a lot of your classmates also struggle. For many people taking Introduction to Physics, you haven't worked with the scientific notation in a long time. So that's why I'm making this video. Let me take some preliminary things out of the way. These units all work out. Kilogram squared gets cancelled by the kilograms. The meter squared gets cancelled by meter squared. So you are left with the Newton unit of force. Then the question is basically doing out this multiplication of these three numbers divided by one, which won't change anything. Now, I could show you this calculation on a calculator, but every calculator looks a little bit different. So I thought I would show you how to do a big chunk of this by hand. I will use calculator at some point. So let me write this out. The force is, I'm just gonna write down the numbers only. 6.674 times 10 to minus 11 times 2 times 2 and divide by 1. All of that in newtons. So the first step is to separate out the things that come before the power of 10 and just multiply those. You can do that the way you are familiar with. I think I will pull out my calculator to do this on a calculator. So this is 6.674 times 2 times 2 is equal to 2.7. I don't want to carry so many significant figures. All right, we're not quite done. We need to take care of the power of 10. So I have only one power of 10. And that's it. Numerically, this isn't wrong. Uh, it's correct. Now, it's not the number it's uh, looking for because the question looks for the answer in piconewtons. So first you have to know how much piconewtons is, how it compares to a newton. If you look up metric prefixes, you'll find that pico stands for 10 to minus 12. So piconewton is 10 to minus 12 newton. Or another way of putting it would be 1 newton is equal to 10 to the 12 piconewton. That's how many piconewtons you need to make up a newton. So given this force in newtons, to express the piconewtons, you multiply it by 1. And this 1 is very specifically constructed. It's a ratio of two quantities that are equal to each other. For example, 1 newton and 10 to the 12 piconewtons. And you arrange them in a way so that the unit you want to get rid of will cancel out. So here I need to put a newton on the bottom. So in the numerator, I get 10 to the 12 piconewtons. And for those of you working out units, newtons cancel and you are left with the piconewtons. Now here, to do the multiplication of 10 to minus 11, 10 to the 12, you do a little exponential algebra. I hope people remember this. When you have 10 to the power of A multiplying to 10 to the power of B, that's equal to 10 to A plus B. This is like saying you multiply a number by 10, A number of times, and then you continue multiplying by 10, another B number of times. Well, I could say that then I'm multiplying 10 by a plus b times. The only wrinkle here is a and b don't have to be integers. All right, so with this exponential algebra rule, I can simplify 10 to minus 11 times 10 to the 12, 
as 10 to 1 or 26.7 times 10 to 1 or 10 piconewtons or I can simplify it a little more 267 piconewton so that's how you arrive at the correct answer in fact whenever you see prefixes like this usually the intent is to make things easier for you so that you don't have to enter powers of 10 into your answer now that's all you need for the homework and if you can follow this this is probably good enough but I want you to take this opportunity to further describe how you would handle it if you have more than one very small or large number. Let's say we are dealing with the gravitational forces between two gram masses, no kilogram. All right, that's going to change some of my numbers here. Let me write this down. So one gram is a thousandth of a gram or 10 to minus three kilogram. So this would be two times 10 to minus 3 kilogram times 2 times 10 to minus 3 kilogram. So at least the units cancel out as before because I took care to keep the same unit of mass. And now working out this product will be a little bit more mass. So instead of multiplying by 2 each time, I have multiplying by 10 to minus 3 each time. And when we work out all the units, it's going to end up in Newton. That was actually the point of expressing gram in terms of kilogram because kilogram is the base SI unit. All right, so here is where my advice is helpful. You multiply all the numbers that come before the powers of 10. That will give you this value from the start, 26.7. But what we need to figure out is what factor of 10 comes here. So multiplying together all the powers of 10, I have 10 to minus 11, minus 3, minus 3. So 10 to minus 17 newtons, which is going to cancel out with this newton here when we convert the unit. Please make sure you know where this minus 17 came from. This is the exponential algebra rule. I have 10 to minus 11 plus minus 3, so minus 14 plus minus 3 is 10 to minus 17. All right, then instead of this being 10 to the power of 1, it's actually going to be 10 to the power of minus 17 plus 12, so minus 5 piconewtons. So in this scenario, that's the answer. You can clean up the expression a little bit by, for example, applying this 10 to minus 5 to the numerical value. So minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0. All these spaces I left behind are zeros so where they're supposed to go. So 0 0.000267 piconewtons. Now, this is all good. But what if you can't do the calculation by hand? What if you just want to check your answer? There is a great resource for that. It's called Ulfram Alpha. The site is called ulframalpha.com. It's a free website. There are some pro features that you can access with an annual license or College of Alameda actually has a site license. But the feature I will demonstrate today is the free feature. So to answer this homework question, I had two masses of two kilogram each separated by a meter. You can actually enter them into Ulfram Alpha. Let me demonstrate. So I have G, gravitational constant. Wolfram Alpha knows about physical constants and units. It saves you a lot of work. Times the masses. 2 kilogram times 2 kilogram. And then the distance divided by, by the distance, or in this case, 1 meter squared. Let's see what we get. It's the same answer we got, or in piconewtons, 267 piconewtons and in fact you could specify the units that they will be coming in all right so that's it uh, please use this tool judiciously so that you are not struggling for very long while being frustrated at not being able to do this task 
So that's it. I hope this is helpful and I'll see you in the other lecture videos. All right, then until then, bye.